The Middle Ages were turbulent times. Constant warfare and disease meant that millions of people died all across the world. Some of the ways that death came upon them can still be recognised today. Some are a little more imaginative. This video is going to give us an insight into the daily lives of the medievals, their attitudes and the conditions in which they lived and subsequently died. Welcome to Medieval Madness. Drink. On the 6th of May 1301, Peter de Huntington and Andrew Prill had already been drinking when they arrived at the house of Walter Vigorous in London. Once there, they continued to drink until the hour of Vespers, which was at sunset. Andrew and Peter decided to begin wrestling, just for fun. Andrew wanted to stop play fighting because his clothes were torn, so being a good friend, Peter took off his own vest and gave it to Andrew to wear. They carried on wrestling with as much strength as they could summon. Because of the way in which they gripped each other, Peter's right leg was broken. He lived for almost a month, but then he died on the night of the 1st of June because of the fracture and bad attention. Richard Brewer was carrying a bag of malt up steps at the house of William Cross on 17th of December 1300. As he was entering the living quarters overcome with drink, he stumbled by accident and fell. He ruptured his diaphragm and his bowels, living on for just five days before he died at night before the curfew bell was rung. Fly. Pope Adrian IV was the only Englishman ever to have been made Pope. Born Nicholas Breakspear in Hertfordshire, England, he studied law in Arles, France, and moved up through the church until he was elected Pope in 1154. He was crowned at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. His pontificate was difficult, and he spent a lot of time trying to maintain his papal authority against both William the Norman King of Sicily and Frederick Barbarossa, the Holy Roman Emperor. By the autumn of 1159, Adrian was quite poorly with the throat infection Quinzi, now known as tonsillitis. He was in the city of Agnani, Italy, which was a favourite residence of the Pope. The weather was hot, and Adrian wanted to cool down, so he went off to find a particular drinking fountain with his attendants. Once he was there, Adrian drank deeply from the fountain, and according to the tale, a fly flew inside his mouth and got stuck in the back of his throat. Pope Adrian began to choke and consequently died from swallowing a fly. Road Rage On the 24th of August 1278, Godfrey de Belstead was travelling towards London from Cheshunt. He was riding a horse that he had hired from a fellow villager and was in the company of a man named Richard Le Lissier. On the road, they were met by three men driving three carts out of the city. One of the men began to verbally abuse Godfrey, accusing him of riding the horse too fast, and a heated argument began, with Godfrey and Richard on one side and the three carters on the other. Suddenly, one of the carters grabbed an iron fork and hit Godfrey so hard on the top of his head that it caused a two-inch wound, exposing part of his brain. The other two carters joined in the assault and began to beat the already badly injured Godfrey and his companion Richard with sticks. Richard was only just able to escape with his life, but Godfrey was left for dead. Godfrey survived for just over a week before the poor man succumbed to his head wound and the injuries from his beating. He died on the 1st of September, on or about the third hour. Pig In 1394, at Sherborne in Warwickshire, William Waller's pig bit Robert Barron on the left elbow, and this caused him to die immediately. And at a shop in London in the spring of 1322, a one-month-old baby girl named Joanna, daughter of Bernard of Ireland, was lying alone in her cradle. The shop door was open and a sow wandered in and bit her on the side of her head, mortally wounding her. After a good while, her mother Margaret came in and on finding her baby in such a bad state, raised the cry. She kept the baby alive until midnight, but unfortunately the child died from the said bite. Laughing. Martin I of Aragon was ruler of Aragon and Valencia, the islands of Corsia and Sardinia, and Count of Barcelona from 1396. He became King of Sicily in 1409. He must have been an okay guy because he was also known by the nickname Martin the Humane. He had a turbulent reign though, first ascending to the throne because his brother John I died without an heir. 
Martin was sorting out some wayward Sicilian nobles when he was called to take the throne in Aragon. His delay in getting back meant that there were challenges from two of his nieces and their supporters to his authority. But Martin managed to hold off the invasions from his family and enjoyed a reign that was quite successful. He was a supporter of Pope Benedict VIII and helped to rescue him when he was imprisoned in 1403. In 1410, Martin was staying at the monastery of Valdonzella, just outside the city walls of Barcelona. For supper, he had eaten an entire goose. This was something that Martin did regularly, and he was known as being severely obese. He retired to bed with a bad case of indigestion and asked for Bora, his jester, to come and cheer him up. And that's when Martin is rumoured to have died from laughing. And what was the joke that caused so much mirth? Well, on arrival at the king's bedchamber, Martin asked Borrow where he had been to, which Borrow replied, quote, In the next vineyard where I saw a young deer hanging by his tail from a tree, as if someone had so punished him for stealing figs. Apparently hanging deer by their tails as a penalty for fig stealing was hilarious in 15th century Spain. Who knew? Of all the nasty ways there was to die in the Middle Ages, going out laughing was not a bad ending. Faking it. In 1318, the Archbishop of York, William Melton, wrote a letter to the Dean of Beverley. In it, he warns the Dean that a nun by the name of Joan of Leeds, of the House of St. Clement by York, had gone missing and was somewhere in Beverley, living with a man. Melton informed the Dean that Joan had, quote, impudently cast aside the propriety of religion and the modesty of her sex. It appears that several of Joan's fellow nuns helped her with the escape, which she did by feigning illness and death by using a mannequin in place of her body. Melton stated that, quote, Out of a malicious mind, simulating a bodily illness, she pretended to be dead, not dreading for the health of her soul, and with the help of numerous of her accomplices, evildoers with malice aforethought, crafted a dummy in the likeness of her body in order to mislead the devoted faithful, and she had no shame in procuring its burial in a sacred space amongst the religious of that place. After faking her own death and burial, she then, quote, in a cunning and nefarious manner, having turned her back on decency and the good of religion, seduced by indecency, she involved herself irreverently to the way of carnal lust, and away from poverty and obedience, and having broken her vows and discarded the religious habit, she now wanders at large to the notorious peril to her soul and to the scandal of all of her order. And it wasn't the first time that St. Clements had been scandalised by wayward nuns. In 1301, another nun from the Priory by the name of Cecily met certain men at the gates and threw off her nun's habit before getting on a saddled horse and riding with them to Darlington. Once there, Gregory de Thornton was waiting for her, and she lived with him for more than three years. Archbishop Melton went on to lead an army of York citizens, clergy, and friars at the Battle of Mighton on the Swale against the Scots in 1319. He later became Lord Treasurer of England. Unfortunately, the whereabouts of Joan of Leeds was never discovered. Karma Known as the Mighty, Sigurd Einstensen was the second Viking Earl of the Orkney, who lived and ruled at the end of the 19th century. The Orkney Islands are just off the northeast coast of Scotland, and due to their proximity to Scandinavia, they were perfect as Viking strongholds. A place where they could mount additional attacks on the British mainland, and it seems that Sigurd pretty much smashed his enemies wherever he went. Then Sigurd challenged Mol Brichter, the Bucktooth, who was a Scottish nobleman. He agreed to a duel, but it seems that Sigurd was not always an honourable fighter. The conditions of combat were that each warrior would take 40 men and meet together for a fight to the death. But Sigurd cheated quite a bit and rocked up with 80 men instead. Completely outnumbered, Maul and his men were swiftly defeated, and Maul was beheaded. Taking Maul's head as a victory trophy, Sigurd took it and strapped it to his saddle. The man's distinctive buck teeth meant that his head could be identified by any other challengers and act as a deterrent. But as Sigurd rode away, one of those famed buck teeth sliced into his leg. The wound quickly became infected, and Sigurd died not long after because of the disease wound. Maul had managed to get his revenge on the cheating Sigurd from beyond the grave. A crown for a king. Georg Dozer was thought to be a nobleman from Transylvania. He was born in 1470 in Dalnik, Romania. In 1514, the Hungarian Chancellor was given a papal bull from Pope Leo X, which authorised a crusade against the Ottomans. 
The Chancellor chose Dozer to organise and lead the Crusade. Within weeks, Dozer had gathered together an army from the lowest ranks of medieval society, including clerics and peasants raising an army of 40,000 men to fight the Turkish invaders. The local nobles, however, refused to support the cause and demanded that the peasants return to the fields, so a rebellion began. With the original crusade now forgotten, the rebellion spread quickly, with more and more towns joining the fight as they marched through Hungary. Doza captured the fortress of Senad and had both the bishop and the governor of the city impaled. The amateur army was met by a Hungarian force of 20,000 better trained and better equipped men just 25 miles from the capital, and the rebel forces were decimated. Dozer was captured. His punishment was to be seated on a red-hot iron throne, wear a smouldering iron crown, and carry a fiery scepter in an attempt at mock coronation to ridicule his ambition to be king. Whilst suffering from this torture, nine of his comrades were led before him. One of them was his younger brother, who was cut into three pieces whilst Dozer watched. Then, red-hot pliers were driven into Dozer's skin, and the eight remaining ebbles, who had been starved beforehand, were forced to bite and swallow the flesh from the wounds. Those that refused were also cut down. Unsurprisingly, Dozer died from the ordeal. Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Do hope you've enjoyed it, and please do subscribe if you enjoy the content, as we do release videos weekly. See you later. Cheers.